Hey, so this is the part two video for simplifying rational expressions. So your steps for simplifying rational expressions are gonna be the same as you saw in part one, factor, cancel. In factoring, you do have a couple of different options and all of those came from the chapter, um, the factoring chapter flow chart. Your first big one is gonna be factor by GCF and then we saw factor by grouping rainbow, and then our special cases, sum and difference of cubes or difference of squares. Once you have factored, then you can cancel. You can only cancel tops with bottoms. Um, something to note with this factor cancel, just remember you can only cancel if something is a common factor, meaning that it is touching multiplication. You cannot cancel unless it is a common factor. So meaning you have to factor first and then find the common factors. So here's example one, not really anything uh, factoring related yet. The directions say to find the value of the rational expression for the given value of the variable. 13y plus five divided by y squared minus three y minus 10. So the first thing you're gonna do is, um, take this variable that they told me, y, and they said, well, y equals nine. So everywhere I saw a y, I'm going to now replace by plugging in nine. So I'm gonna put a nine there and there. So I'm gonna rewrite this expression as 13 y plus five, except y is now nine, divided by y squared minus three y minus 10, but I have y squared is nine minus three times y minus 10. Something that I would make note of is notice anytime I am inserting um, a number into an equation, as I'm inserting that, I'm going to put that number in parentheses. Now, depending on what calculator you have, I have an example of that one to the right, but this is just an exercise of putting it in your calculator. You're going to want to do the entire numerator first, so you're gonna type that in 13 times nine plus five, which gives us out 122. I just typed it in just like it appears. So I did this whole first part and that gave me that 122. Now down below, I do have a calculator example of one because I wanted to show you. For this squared, sure you could write that as nine times nine, but if this is the calculator you have or any TI, you're gonna be using this button on the left hand side. So this x squared, you can't see it. This x squared button, so you'll hit nine. And then if you push that button, it's going to make nine squared. You also could use this button right up above. This is the exponent button, so that's to any other power. So you would do nine, that button two would be the same thing as nine squared. So I'm gonna type that into my calculator. Make sure you type it in just like it appears. And so I got 44. Now from here, you're gonna reduce it. Um, Hawks will let you do a simplified fraction or um, a decimal, I believe. So I don't have a scientific calculator with me but I'm gonna divide top and bottom by two to reduce this. And so I'll get 61 on top and 22 on the bottom. And then I can leave that. If not, if you do have a scientific calculator, your calculator will actually do it for you. You will click, um, you'll type the number in, 122 divided by 44, enter. Up here on the screen, you're gonna get this big long decimal, and then you'll type second, this F to D button, so second is like shift, you'll click enter. It'll then give you a mixed number, 
so it will say two and whatever. To get the mixed number to an improper, you'll click again, second, and the button right below that, which says A, B, C to D, E, and that says I'm gonna go from a mixed number to an improper, you'll click enter, and then it will give you out the reduced fraction or this 61 over 22. Example two says reduce the rational expression to lowest terms. So this is one actually is kind of a trick that I wanted to uh, make sure to get into a video. I see addition subtraction signs. So my kind of my first instinct is going to be some type of factoring. So I see the top and I'm looking for always first to GCF. I see that they both have an eight in common. So I'm going to factor out an eight. So divide out the eight will leave me with Y minus two. The bottom doesn't reduce, or sorry, it doesn't factor, and so I've kind of left it like so. Um, we would then look at that and say, well, nothing cancels because these two are not exactly the same, but I'm actually going to show you a little shortcut or a trick um, for the subtraction. So I don't expect you to do this every time, but I'm going to show you where the shortcut comes from. This 2 minus y I'm going to write it over here. 2 minus y, I could actually, I could just say, well, what if I factored out a negative 1? If I were to factor out a negative 1, 2 divided by negative 1 would give me a negative 2, and negative y divided by negative 1 would give me positive y. Now I could rewrite that order so that negative one is still going to be out front and I could flip this around. I could write y first and negative two second. And so we see that two minus y and negative one times y minus two are actually the same thing. That's what I just proved you there. So in place of that denominator, I still have the same numerator. In place of that 2 minus y, I can write what I just found. That this denominator is actually the same thing as this. So where I had that denominator, I can rewrite it with the new part. Now those look the same and I can actually cancel it. So what we're left with is 8 on top and that negative 1 on the bottom. Well, 8 divided by negative 1 is going to give me negative 8. So here's your trick. Your trick says if the order is flipped with subtraction, the 2 will cancel and leave behind a negative 1. So we could have taken a shortcut and said, okay, well, using that trick, those two are opposite and they are being subtracted. So I'm going to cancel those and leave behind a negative one. I always recommend leaving the negative one on top because it just makes your life a little bit easier. We saw that equality property that said it didn't matter if I put the negative time, the negative sign on top, if I put it out front, or if I put it on the bottom. So that says I can write this negative one wherever. And so there's kind of your shortcut, your trick to those type of problems. All right, the last two examples are going to be just reducing, just plain old reducing, simplifying is another way. Um, I made a little note about the factoring methods over there on the right-hand side. I want to compare some monomials versus to, in this case, some binomials. So on the left, I have monomials because there's no addition or subtraction signs. On the right, I have binomials because it does have addition, in this case, just addition signs. So when you are just factoring with the monomials, the factoring of step one is going to look a little bit different. So 15, I can write 15 as 3 times 5. That's what we call the prime factorization. So I'm going to rewrite 15 as 3 times 5 or 5 times 3 x to the fourth, I'm going to rewrite as x times x times x. So 4x's. 
the y I'm going to write as y times y because it's y squared. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. So 12, I could write 12 as 2 times, or sorry, 3 times 4 or 2 times 2 times 3. So we'll just say 3 times 4 for now. So that's my 12. X to the fifth, I'm going to rewrite as X times X times X times X times X, five of them. And then the Y will just stay the same because it's just Y to the one. Now that I've factored and we use that kind of loosely with monomials, now I can cancel because all of these are touching multiplication. They are monomials. So I'm going to cancel the X's. I can cancel the threes. I can cancel several X's and one Y. And again, I can only do that because they're all touching multiplication. So on top, I am left with one five. I'm left with the Y. So I'm left with 5y on top, and then on the bottom, I don't know what happened. On the bottom, so cancel. Uh, on the bottom, I'm left with 4 and the x. And so my final answer will be 5y over 4x because left behind, I've got the 5, the y, and the 4, and the x, and everything else canceled. A little shortcut we learned was that you could subtract the exponents. Um, we will officially learn that property in a couple of chapters, but that certainly does work. That is the quotient property of exponents. And so that would be your final answer. All right, the last one in this video, 4xy plus y squared divided by 5y squared plus 3y. I'm factoring since it has addition or subtracting, so subtraction, so factoring in the common sense that we've been looking at in class using one of these factoring methods. Um, just note, special cases is your sum difference of cubes or difference of squares. Those I kind of lumped all together in special cases. Always check your GCF first and then go from there. And so I'm looking at this top, this numerator. I've got 4xy plus y squared. Well, instantly I see a GCF of y. And so I'm going to factor out the y. And I'll be left with 4x plus y when I take out that y. 5y squared plus 3y. So I'm looking for a GCF, and I see that they both have a y in common on the bottom as well. And so I'm left with 5y plus 3. Now that I have factored, I can cancel these y's because now these y's are touching multiplication. They are a common factor. And so I'm left with 4x plus y on top. And on the bottom, I'm left with 5y plus 3. And that would be my final answer. I cannot cancel those y's. I can't cancel those y's because they're both touching addition. Also, way up here, I can't cancel y's because while you may argue, well, that one's touching multiplication, this whole term, it's 3y, is touching addition, and this whole term, 4xy, is touching addition.